Hi to everyone. Now, I can't believe that the rabbits are now choosing the grabber prizes. Who ever heard of such a thing? That just has to be a global first. Rabbits choosing prizes is all very strange at Michelle's house. But anyway, this bit of the service, when we tell this story, it's for everyone, but it's especially for tribe and for flame. And we've been thinking, haven't we, about praying and about how someone described it as the greatest source of power known to mankind. What an amazing thing to say. And we've been looking at this story of someone who knew a little bit and found out a little bit about this greatest source of power and her name was Gladys Aylwood we know that by now um, she was a maid who came from North London not far from where many of us live um, age 19 she goes to this church and to these revival meetings and she decides to give her life to God and she says God I want you to use my life she feels that he is calling her to go out to China and what she doesn't know is that out in China, uh, another woman is praying um, and she is praying, Lord, would you send me someone to help me? It was Mrs. Lawson, age 73, who so badly needed a young person to help her. And so Gladys, having been turned down by the main missionary organisation, decides, well, in my heart, I feel God still wants me to go. And she begins to save up. She goes out on that train, do you remember, leaving Liverpool Street Station in 1932 and goes on that huge journey right out across Europe towards Russia, on out towards Siberia. Uh, and that mountainous area. And then do you remember they hear the sounds of war in the distance? Um, and then she ends up on that deserted train and has to go back, walks for a day and a night in those woods uh, where there are wolves. Um, it's very dark. Uh, she's alone. And when she gets back, she's arrested. And then that piece of paper falls out of her Bible. Don't be afraid of them, for I'm with you. Um, and amazingly, she is set free by that group of Russian officials. She goes on out to the far side of Russia to a city called Vladivostok and it's even east of China. By now she's had to go right past China because of the war. She, tra she then gets arrested again, do you remember, and she escapes um, from those Russian officials onto a boat uh, which takes her to Japan and there in Kobe she meets with the Christians and they set her on her way and help her as she heads off in the steamer to go to China. She travels back across towards China and reaches Tianjin and goes to that mission hall, do you remember, and the Christians gather around her and she sings with them praise my soul the king of heaven look what he's done for me Gladys Aylwood what an extraordinary journey I've had and then the final part of that journey is Mr. Lu comes down from Wang Cheng where Mrs. Lawson is he comes down and they go on trains and buses and then finally on those mules and then do you remember we reached this point last week she reaches Wang Cheng and here is a picture of the doorway where she would have met Mrs. Lawson who says to her who are you? Do you remember? And Gladys Aylwood replies, I'm Gladys Aylwood. I've come from London. Well, you better come in then, Mrs. Lawson said. And in she goes. And here's a picture of a courtyard. It isn't the actual one, but the courtyard where, where they had this inn would have looked very much like this. Um, it was very broken down. It didn't have proper doors. There were, it didn't have many uh, windows. Uh, but Mrs. Lawson liked it because it was cheap. Um, and the rent was only about six pounds a year. No one else wanted it, basically. You see, she explained to Gladys that Yang Cheng is the overnight stopping point for the mule trains. So in those days, they didn't have big lorries carrying stuff. They had these mule trains, so donkeys who were carrying stuff in carts, and they were traveling convoy. Um, and Yang Cheng was where they all stopped overnight while they rested on these long journeys that they made. And Mrs. Lawson said, "We, I, I want to build an inn here, um, and uh, I want to call it the Inn of Eight Happinesses. I want people to feel that they'll come here and they'll find all these different and wonderful things, and they'll find happiness here, um, and we'll give them food, and we'll give them rest, and we'll, we want to talk to them about Jesus. And Gladys Aylwood said, well, what am I going to do? I can't even speak the language yet. And so she taught her to say the first words that uh, Gladys Aylwood really learnt in Chinese or learned to speak. She taught her to stand outside the inn and shout out, no bugs, no fleas, good, 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 come, come, come. And so she stood outside the inn um, and she would call this to the mule trains as they went past and she would sometimes grab hold of the, the donkey at the front and pull the donkey in and all the others would follow in. And then they'd be looked after um, in, these, in this um, area behind the courtyard. 
And so, night after night, the muleteers began to come to the Inn of Eight Happinesses. And Jeannie Lawson began to pray. And Gladys Aylwood said that until that time she thought she'd learnt to pray. She thought she'd learnt at the China Inland Mission. But she said actually she'd never heard anyone pray like Jeannie Lawson prayed. She said it was as if she was beating on the very door of heaven. And the thing she was praying for was, oh God, would you help us to tell these men about Jesus? And so night after night after the mules had been taken to their their stalls and they'd been fed, the men would come in and they'd climb up onto this platform area and it was called a Kang, K-A-N-G, and it was a heated stone area like a platform with fire underneath it uh, that was coming off from where they were cooking uh, because that whole area of northern China was bitterly, bitterly cold. And so after the men came in, they'd get up onto this platform and they would eat their food. And as they ate their food, they would listen to Jeannie Lawson telling them stories because she spoke wonderful Chinese. And Gladys Aylwood said she remembered watching the men leaning forward so they could really hear what Mrs Lawson was saying. So the reputation of the Inn of Eight Happinesses, run by the two foreign ladies, began to spread far and wide. The men said it's clean, you get really good food there, and best of all, you get great stories in the evening. Um, And Mrs Lawson, they told the stories from the Bible of Moses and Daniel, um, but best of all, they loved the stories that she told about Jesus, um, who was said to be the very son of God, who had walked on earth but was now walking in heaven with the angels. And they worshipped him because he had died for the people. The angels were worshipping him in heaven because he died for the people and then he'd been raised from the dead by God himself. And the men began to hear the messages and some of them started to become Christians, so much so that the courtyard came to be known as the Jesus Courtyard. And night after night as the men were there, something wonderful was happening for Gladys as well. She listened to the stories and she listened to the men talking and she realised that she was beginning to understand the language. Do you remember she'd been told you're never going to get the language, Gladys Aylwood? You're never going to understand it and be able to speak it. Well, she began to understand it and to speak it. They said in the end that she spoke it so beautifully that people didn't believe that she hadn't been born there. She spoke like native Chinese. Really amazing. She was then able to meet people um, and, and become friends and talk with them. Here's a wonderful picture of her with some of the children. She began to settle into Yang Chen. And on the weekends, she and Mrs. Lawson and others who were becoming Christians because a church was growing up there, went out into the villages. Um, people would gather round to listen to them. Um, and in those villages, churches began to grow up as well as in the mission hall in Yang Chen. Many of the villages were touched. Many of them experienced in their heart what Gladys had experienced in that church when she was 19 years old. They began to find Jesus. This had been her dream. This had been what she'd wanted to do. She didn't like the mules and looking after them, but she loved doing this. She loved talking, as her father had said. And then there came an unexpected twist in the road. Something unexpected happened. Sometimes unexpected things happen for us, don't they? We need to remember that God knows about these unexpected things. Uh, We weren't expecting this pandemic, but God knew about this. And something unexpected happened for Gladys. And Jeannie Lawson, who's now age 74, um, has a fall, a really bad fall. And a few days later, with Gladys nursing her, she dies. And her dying words to Gladys are this. She says, God has called you here in answer to my prayer. He will provide for you. He will protect you. He will bless you. Carry on with the work. And here's an amazing photo. This is a picture of the day of Jeannie Lawson's funeral. In the middle, I don't know if you can see there, but covered in a white cloth um, with some Chinese writing is Mrs Lawson's coffin. Sitting beside it is Gladys Aylwood. And all around her are some of the men and the others, the women who and children who've become Christians. Do you see some of them are holding Bibles? I, I like to think that even Mr Lou is there. Perhaps he's the one holding the stick. I don't know if you can see him near the back with a little white beard and holding a Bible. 
but they buried Mrs. Lawson out there. And now Gladys is really alone. There's no other uh, Europeans in that area. She has no financial support and she has this terrible thought, perhaps I leave, perhaps I need to go back, perhaps this is all God wanted me to do. And then she thought, but I've learnt the language and God is moving here, I want to stay. She said, I prayed anxiously at that time. She's very honest, isn't she? For the way ahead seemed full of difficulties. Did God answer her prayer for help? Um, as she was beating on the door of heaven like she'd been taught by Mrs. Lawson, he did answer her prayer, but it was in a very unusual way. And we're going to find out about that next week. Oh God, we thank you for this wonderful story. We thank you for those men hearing about Jesus, the Son of God, who had walked on earth, but who now uh, walks among the angels and is worshipped by them uh, because he died for the people and he was raised from the dead by, by you yourself. God, we thank you. Uh, for the message of Jesus, we pray, could it reach our hearts more and more. Amen. Amen.